This is our campsite tonight. Pretty spectacular. Are you peeing in our water source? You've literally just peed in our water source. That is very bad etiquette. Uh uh, you're not getting in and going for a pee. Remember all those cacti and rattlesnakes from the desert? Well, welcome to the Sierra. from Casa de Stockwell. This is inside our tent. So as you might be able to tell, I am still on trail. Woo! So um, as of our last update, obviously there was no improvement in my foot and I didn't know what to do. So, so I thought, well, you know what? I've hiked out 400 miles on a sore foot so I can hike a few more. And the stretch that we were going to do was nine days. Um, and after three days, there was also another route out. So I kind of uh, aided myself with um, and filled up on painkillers. I had a compression um, bandage for my foot and I just went for it. Uh, so here we are a couple of days on and foot is feeling kind of okay. So we'll take it, long may it continue. So it is lunchtime. Look at all these people lunching. Normally lunch is probably our favorite meal of the day. Um, we tend to do a tortilla or a pita bread and we put in that, um, like sliced ham or chicken or turkey. Uh, we have cheese in there. We've put cucumber in there, barbecue crisps, mayonnaise, pickles, all sorts. Um, unfortunately, we have now started a nine day food carry, which is the longest we have ever um, carried our food. On the Appalachian Trail, the longest we did, I think was five days. Maybe we did a six in there, I can't remember it. Um, the longest we've done on this trail, I think has been four days. So jumping up to nine days, it's just a huge amount of food to carry. And um, in a bear box. And yes, my next point that I was coming to. Um, it's coincided with a point where we have entered bear country. Um, and so to stop Mr. Bear coming and taking our food at night, um, when we're camped, we have to keep all our food in a big bear box. Well, not a big bear box, but in a bear, bear camp, a big plastic tub. Um, and fitting nine days of food in that is very challenging. So I'm down to half rations for dinner. Uh, half of my breakfasts are going to be three quarter rations and the nice fancy lunch that was something to look forward to each day has gone um, and it's been replaced with something that just packs um, better takes up less space which is a single tortilla wrap and some peanut butter so now my nice lunch has turned into this sad thing so nine days time i'm going to be very hungry but what i can do is add m m's so, I'm about to salt bay some M&Ms into this wrap. Today we're climbing up Mount Whitney, which is the tallest mountain in the continental US. Um, it's like a eight and a half mile one way from the PCT, so we're gonna go up and then go back down. Um, yeah, here's, can you see them? No. <laughs> Wait, yeah, there they are. <laughs> Those are the other two. Uh, we've got a ways to go yet, and it's starting to get light out. 
so that's nice. And the air is getting kind of thin, so it's hard to breathe. go up Forester Pass which is the highest point on the PCT and it is right there so we're gonna have to go up all that and then obviously come back down the other side and I think it's like maybe two miles from here to the top it's about 13,000 feet of elevation um, there's not much snow thankfully so yeah that's where we're going if you're wondering how I get from here to there Right now, so am I. What? Forester Pass, 13,200 feet. Is she gonna fall, YouTube? What do we think? Can she break the habit of a lifetime and stay on her feet? Look at that stride for confidence. Yep, side, side is good. Yeah. <laughs> she made it! <laughs> Another day, another pass. This is us in the Sierras. We're about five days in, I think. Yeah, five um, of a nine day stretch. No, it must be day six. Um, and we started just doing a pass a day. So pass is the, the section which kind of joins the two mountains. So you don't actually peak out, summit any of the mountains, um, but you go kind of between them and just as well. Because our first pass was 13 and a half thousand feet. And thankfully they've been getting lower the one that we're about to do, which is just behind me, there, if you could see it. Oh, oh I'm putting it on right, there we go. Um, it's about 11,500. And everything at this altitude just gets a little bit more difficult because of the lack of oxygen, especially when you're carrying so much food. But it's been absolutely beautiful. Cold, but beautiful. Glen Pass, just under 12,000 feet. Now down we go. Hey buddy. <laughs> Oh, 
so close on Mario my attack. <laughs> They're very slippy. Did you go over the rocks or through the water? <laughs> okay. Hedwig, it's better to just go through the water than fall. Oh no. You okay? Yeah. Okay, let's show them how to deal with these slippy rocks. Just gonna stand here. Oh, 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 oh. And it's just one simple step. Oh, oh, I don't like it. Oh God, oh no. Help, help. Oh, that's fine. It's easy, you should just... I just need to pick a different way. Yeah, I'll just go over here. One simple step. Yep, yep, just get my feet right. Here we go. Oh, oh. see? And there we go. Now from here, just here. And then I'm gonna, I'm just gonna, uh, oh, never mind. Morning of day seven of this section, and we are heading up to Muir Pass today. Over the top, down the bottom, eight miles up. Um, I can't remember how many down, but uh, that's hopefully the easy bit. Lovely through the woods this morning, it's cold. I know, there's loads of people that have been camped in similar spots to us. I'm desperate to get a bear sighting. We haven't had one yet, so I'm breaking all the rules and hiking in silence. Very bad practice. But you never know. <laughs> Robin I shouted bear. Don't shout. <laughs> There's a river down here and it's still early morning, which I feel prime. We're in prime bear country. Come on, look at this. Look at these woods. We're gonna find one. Muir Pass, named after John Muir, famous outdoorsy guy.
we're going to town this morning, which is pretty exciting because it's been nine days since we were last in town. And this is like the most remote backcountry wilderness hiking I've ever done. So it's been nine days since we've had access to showers, since we've had access to outlets or vegetables. It's been nine days since I've seen a road. I've seen three buildings, two of which were like emergency shelters way up on top of mountains, and one ranger station. So we're pretty excited to get into town and to have access to like indoor plumbing and a kitchen. Really excited, trust me. Hello! Didn't think I'd ever have to record in my rain jacket. We just had a hailstorm. First time in, uh, in California. Thunder and everything. So, all a bit shocked actually. We've never prepared for it. Kind of brought our raincoats as more of a wind coat than anything, but uh, there you go. Glad we got them. Um, so, it's been a few days since I did an update. My foot actually doing okay. I mean, it's definitely not great. <coughs> Excuse me. But um, yeah, it's been manageable, and um, I'm really glad that I pushed on because the views that we've had have been absolutely spectacular. However, unfortunately, um, I think as compensation for my foot, I've changed how I've been walking, which has induced pain in my knee, which has been an absolute pain. <laughs> uh, quite literally, actually. Um, it is the most agonizing thing that I have actually experienced uh, throughout this hike. Um, so, I managed to hike three days on max painkillers uh, down to VVR um, I, where I managed to get some tape and a knee brace and then I'm now trying to hike on that. I must admit, it's not perfect but a couple of days will be in Mammoth um, and I'll try a different type of knee brace if I need to um, but the journey continues. Uh, but I must admit, I'm kind of bored of it, like my day being rated on how much pain have I been in rather than how's the terrain been and like oh you enjoyed the, the hike but I think all part and parcel of through hiking. From the particularly nice uh, Mammoth Lakes, California which is our current um, our current town stop just after the 900 mile mark we've come down into town to um, resupply but also take stock sort of assess where we're at um, particularly in regards to Robin's injuries uh, so that's probably the the big question hanging over us from the last vlog is what's possible now, um, how far can we get, what's the situation with um, both her ankle, which is where we left the last vlog, um, but unfortunately over the last 12 days or so her knee. Um, so I think we will have covered in the videos of this vlog that the, the pain has sort of um, moved, we think maybe from overcompensating, trying to keep as much weight as possible off um, that bad ankle and bad foot, which to be honest, it's looking more and more like it probably is a stress fracture. Uh, we, we got that x-ray to try and eliminate that, try and get some information on if it was a stress fracture or not, but x-rays just aren't um, aren't particularly efficient at, at spotting stress fractures. You know, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. We couldn't see anything, or rather, you know, the, the doctor couldn't, couldn't see anything to conclusively tell us it was a stress fracture, but it doesn't rule out that it was. Um, the, the thought was it's probably a bad strain or maybe tendonitis, and that would go after a week's worth of rest. We did the week's worth of rest when we stayed with um, Robin's parents, but it didn't have an impact. So I think that probably increases the chance that it probably is a stress fracture, something that's gonna take um, you know, six weeks of rest to, to possibly heal. Um, nevertheless, we hiked on, she hiked on, We've done 12 days of hiking since then, a big nine day stretch uh, through the first sort of half of the Sierras, um, as we know, including Whitney, highest continental mountain in the, in the States. Um, so really hard work going up over these passes, over these mountains, all on a foot that's um, probably broken. In compensating for that, uh, trying to keep weight off that ankle, um, she's antagonized her knee on her other leg um, to a point that is actually considerably worse now 
than the ankle was. Um, we've had some really strong painkillers on the go. We've had a variety of knee braces and she's just been in so much pain hiking for 12 days through really difficult conditions. Um, I don't think I could have done it. I don't think many people could have done it. And she's kept going um, mostly with a smile on her face. Um, and it's just been incredibly tough for her, especially on the, the downhills, which have been worse, have been particularly painful. Um, we're at the 900 mile mark. There's an awful long way to go to Canada. So we've taken the decision that um, she's not going to be able to get there on those two injuries. Uh, it's just unrealistic to expect to, to go to 2,650 miles minus um, some inevitable fire closures of probably a few hundred miles. Um, that we'd hit in North California once wildfire season really gets going there. Um, so Robin's off trail and the question then becomes, what am I going to do? Um, so I've taken the decision, decision that I'm not going to carry on and go to Canada. Um, to do that, I'd be out here for another two and a half months. And it's just, it's too far to go in um, and too long a time for us to be separated and for me to continue on this adventure that we both came to do together. Um, we learned from the AT when she had to get off for a couple of weeks because of Lyme disease and I carried on. Um, she was off for three weeks, I carried on and after the two week mark I just happened to pass the 1500 mile mark and just crossing that big milestone it hit me and I realised we, we came to do this together. It's silly that I'm carrying on without her so I then got off trail for her last week of recovery and slack packed her through the um, the two weeks that I'd done she'd missed afterwards. I, I want to learn from that lesson, and I have learned from that lesson, I'm not going to carry on um, for two and a half months um, without her when we came to do this together. So I'm definitely not going to Canada. Um, we've had some sort of debate and thought about if I'd carry on and just finish the Sierra section, so that would be another 110 miles. We've got a plan that would do that in eight days um, it would pass the thousand mile mark, it would get a couple of milestones um, done, but again I just think what's the point? Uh, the only reason for me to carry on and go past a thousand miles is ego, to say I've done a thousand miles on the PCT, that's a bad reason. Uh, finishing the Sierras, so what? It's, it's a milestone but it's, just, it's probably just another ego milestone, it's the wrong driver for me to carry on and do that. Um, I might have to edit this gap out. <laughs> I, I said in my wedding speech that we're a team and I meant it. Uh, so, so I'm going to get off trial as well. Um, and we're going to use the, the time and the money we have left before we have to really get back to work and get back to real life and adulting to um, do other stuff do other adventures together, probably bougie holidays to be honest, um, we'll probably go find a beach to sit on. We're going to stay in the States and we're going to stay in this area um, up until the 4th of July and we're going to do the Independence Day celebrations with um, Hedwig and with Indy and just try and round off our trip with them with a big party. Um, obviously I'll lecture Hedwig on what a terrible mistake her ancestors made, um, which, will be fun, <laughs> which will be fun. Um, but yeah, we're going to stay. Uh, to be honest, getting off, getting off trail, we're both fine with. Not finishing this journey, we're both fine with. There's nothing waiting for us at Canada that we don't already have. Um, we've done a through hike. We don't we don't need to finish. We don't need to finish this trail for for any reason personally. Um, we've had an amazing adventure. We've had an amazing journey. We've been living this life um, that we love for two and a half months this carefree just walking through the wilderness adventure seeing all the sights the wildlife um a, a proper life adventure that we'll look back on in years to come and be proud of even if we you know even with it stopping here so that bit's not the tough bit um leaving Hedwig is hard god I'm such a <laughs> bleeding heart these days um leaving Hedwig is hard she'll carry on um, if she keeps taking videos then I'll keep putting the vlog together so that we can follow her journey um, but to be honest we both love her we've been through so much with her um, with the AT 
with this trail. Um, there's just so much shared experience, um, <laughs> usually of discomfort and um, aches and, and pains and challenging situations. And um, yeah, you see the good stuff in the vlog because you rarely take your phone out and record when it's crap. Um, and when it's hard, and it's often hard, but it's worth it. Uh, we've been, we have so much shared experience with her through, uh, you know, 3,000 miles now of walking. It'll be tough to say goodbye to her. Um, obviously, it's not goodbye to her, she's a friend for life. Uh, but our journey with her will end on this trail, and she'll carry on and hopefully make it to Canada. Um, and obviously, we'll be supporting her. All the way, we'll be sending her care packages and, and missing her. Um, but that's how it goes. So we haven't told her yet. She's out for breakfast with Indy. We went for our own breakfast to try and talk through what we were going to do, if I was going to carry on and whatnot. God, this is long. This is eight and a half minutes already of me practically crying on the internet, which isn't good. <laughs> um, but that's the update. We're going to get off trail. Um, yeah, there's just too many injuries to make getting to Canada realistic, and I'm not going, um, not going there without the, not going there without Robin. So we'll do other stuff. Um, we've got a lodge booked at Lake Tahoe for Independence Day, so we'll round off the trip in style there with the family, um, and then we'll head home to family, friends, the dog. Um, and get back to normal life. In two and a half months, this trail has been so much. Like every through hike is, um, a through hike is everything. You can go on a two week holiday and you can come back and say, oh, it was great, it was really hot. Um, or it was great, it was so relaxing, I'm recharged. Fine. Um, but a through hike and hundreds of miles, probably, you know, if you finish, thousands of miles in five, six months, you'd at times just you're so hot that you you know you, you don't know how you can keep going you're in a hundred degrees Fahrenheit and then at times you're, you're shivering freezing in your tent um, we've had so much fun we've laughed so much and then we've had long days of just boring grinding out the miles um, we have wanted this journey to never end as you do with any through hike and then we want to just go home and sit on the sofa and <laughs> not have to do it and live a, a normal, you know, comfortable existence. Um, you make bonds with people, you make friends with people for life. We we met someone yesterday on what turned out to be our last day of hiking now that um, we hiked somewhere between 500 and 700 miles of the Appalachian Trail with her in 2018. And then, you know, in what's it, June? June 2022 we're hiking down the PCT we turn around and there she is walking towards us um, and it you know you just meet these people and you make friends for life it made us so happy seeing her she's the I mean she's a wonderful person but the shared experience is incredible that you have on an, on an adventure like this it, it really is everything um, and so it's sad to stop but we're okay with it this is how this trail has gone for us um, this has been our journey and it's been an amazing one um, we are glad to have been able to share it so far with everyone that wanted to watch and, and see what it was like please do keep watching because if I can convince Hedwig to take more videos than she normally does then um, the vlog will continue and we'll, we'll follow her to, to Canada and follow her to finish her second through hike and that's probably about it um, I'm about to hit 12 minutes so I'm gonna have to edit this down I think probably the crying bits will be the first bits to go. Um, but yeah, this will be the last time you see us on the vlog, unless we decide to insert any videos of us losing all our money on the slots in Vegas, which is probably one of the places we're gonna go um, in the next vlog as we see Hedwig go from Mammoth Lakes to um, Kennedy Meadows North and finish the Sierra section of the PCT.